good afternoon. We're at the Increase the Peace March organized by East New York Urban Youth Corps and the 75th Precinct. Uh, what is your name, sir? I know you, you're Mr. Winchester Key, uh, the CEO and the founder of East New York Urban Youth Corps. Um, what is today about? Today is about a commitment and a mandate uh, for community policing and the partnership between the community and the 75th Precinct. What are some of our objectives given um, the fact that New York right now is, is at a sensitive moment, critical moment, with its relationship with the mayor and um, all of the precincts? I think that you're the first march that I know of where um, you've taken the first step forward with a partnership with um, the 75th to actually show that it's possible to start an initiative. Uh, the question is, how did you get this going since everyone else is, is just having panel discussions, you know, about what we should do? Well, we had several marches throughout the country and they was upset about police brutality and the way they was treating the minorities. And we always talk about community police and but all we did was talk. Uh, no one's thought of making a mandate that we have that with the police department and the community not have a vehicle that they can address the issues on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, we have a lot of things that we can share together. Uh, we have, for example, the uh, Civilian Academy. Uh, that's set up by the police department where people can go in and, and adults and can go in and they can see the training that the cops and what cops go through during the training period. And they, we also have a ride-along program where uh, the people in the community can go to the precinct and they can ride along with the cops every day and see what's going on from inside the inside the vehicle of the and so they can see exactly what the cops go through every day. So those type of things we're trying to um, uh, mandate that we can close the bridge and the gap, especially with the youth. The youth um, I have no real vehicle or communication with the police department. So as a result, we'll set up a youth community board that will be set up and ran by the youth, and the youth will be in charge with a advisory board to advise them and try to set the mechanism of how they're going to go forward. And we're going to ask the community affairs to the New York City Police Department to be a part of that youth committee board to enhance that they have a direct line with the police department and the youth has a vehicle to address the issues with the police directly. You lead the East New York Urban Youth Corps. How long has East New York Urban Youth Corps had a relationship with the 75th Precinct? All for the last 15 to 20 years. Uh, sometimes um, East New York is, is often cited for having a gang violence here. Has there ever been a relationship between East New York Urban Youth Corps or sit down with the 75th um, to solve problems? We had several uh, 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 forums for the Bloods and Cribs to come in and meet with the inspector and we started those dialogues back and forth. But what happens in a community like ours if there's not an economic agenda and the youth have something to do or have jobs, uh, it really is not effective as it should be because they don't see no future. So we have them, but they stop and they start, but it's not working because they're looking for an economic agenda as well. What's the very next step for this after this Increase the Peace March today? The first step is to meet with the youth and put forth an economic agenda for the community. How can we um, contact you, sir? Uh, you can contact me by uh, telephone number 347-770-9601. Repeat, 347-770-9601. Thank you so much, Mr. Key. And thank you very much.
I have one. Yeah. What's in that way? Uniform. Yes. Um, Mr. Key, who would you have sitting, sitting next to you? This is Mr. Smith. He's in with the community band. Uh, uh, he would explain uh, the name of his band and, and what they do. But uh, you and your question of where we're going from here. Yes. And uh, we sit down with Mr. Smith and through his group we get that youth community board going and the economic agenda. But since he's so involved uh, with the youth and, and have an educational program, uh, he's going to be sparing head in uh, this youth board, community board. And I just wanted him to just take Mr. Smith, if out. I could ask you, I, we understand the, how sensitive um, community police relations are today. Can you address why you brought your band out today first? to an increase the peace march and what this means to you? Um, first and foremost, um, our organization, Really Nice Music and Arts, and we serve the youth in the community. You know, we build, we build leaders of our community. And I believe that the youth will actually carry that to another level if they get the opportunity because they know what they need, they know where they're going. Um, and based off, you know, everything with the police and everything, like the kids don't really have any connection with the officers. You know, um, growing up, they're taught certain things. It's like a gang versus another gang. You don't really know why there's a beef. You know, you just involved with that particular gang. And that's what the kids grow up into. You know, um, seeing the cop, well, I don't like a cop. Why you don't like a cop? Just because. You know, and it becomes friction. So when the officer comes to ask them nicely to do something, they tend to turn their back or walk the other direction. You know, and this is a good opportunity for the kids to actually understand that the cops are people too. You know, and they can actually bring, help bring the community to another level. How do we reach the hard to get young people to give them a sense of trust and, and faith that something different is about to happen? Um, just listen. Yeah. That's it. That's all they ask for. Just You're going to be involved to with developing a board? Yes, um, the Youth Community Board, basically where our organization, the, they make the choices, whether what we want to do, where they want to go, Fabulous. you know, we just give them options. Mm -hmm. You know, we expose them to different opportunities and they choose which direction they want to go. They know what they want to do, they know what they're interested in, you know, they know what's the coolest things or the main attractions to the kids nowadays. The things that we was attracted to when we were younger, you know, the kids, you know, they no longer attract to it. So we may say we enjoy it, but they may not. You know, so having them have their own voice and saying, well, we need this in the community. They don't have this. A lot of kids right now, they're trying to be young entrepreneurs, you know, as far as music. A lot of them want to be uh, producers. They want to be singers, rappers, and they listen to a lot of music and a lot of different people that's influencing them in a negative way, you know, because that's the only people that they have you know, around them. But if they say they want to do that and we make it into a positive environment for them, they will come in. If, if know, someone wanted to help you and especially and being supported so well by East New York Urban Youth Corp, what do you think people could do to help this whole effort by helping East New York Urban Youth Corp and your youth board right now? What do they need to do right now? Um, right now, there's a lot of stuff they can do, but you just have to come up and listen to what we have to say. And do they need? You need resources at all? Uh, resources, of course. We need what does that mean? Um, funding for the kids. We can't operate without any type of resources as far as if they want to go somewhere. You know, most of the kids come from a single parent household with four kids. That's in different programs. If we decide to go somewhere, if a kid had to pay $20, that's a lot for four kids, mm -hmm. you know, with a single parent. 
you know, so based off you know, what's happening in our community. Will the schools be involved in, with your youth board? Yeah, we, we try to get the schools involved. As much How would as you want the schools involved since you are running this board? Um, basically, um, we run it as an educational youth program. We don't only teach the kids about music, it's about real life things. And the first thing that we hint on when they first come in is their grade point average. School is always first. Mm -hmm. So every kid that's involved with the program, their grades shoot up immediately because they don't want to get nothing taken away from them that they actually love doing. You know, we give them something that they love doing and then now you have something for them to push for. You know, most of the kids don't have anything you know, to hold on to, so they don't have no reason to push off for college. I know Mr. Key is, I know Mr. Key is, I'm sorry Mr. Key. The other thing is uh, that we're looking for uh, after school pro location uh, for this program. And I'll be working with the superintendent and the district to try to uh, get that support for them to get a permanent location. And hopefully the mayor's office will assist us as well. Mr. Mr. Smith, what, I know Mr. Key is sitting right next to you, but what would you say to Mr. Key now? Now, after we walked down the street and said increase the peace, we've also said stop the violence. Because he put this together and because the 75th put it together, if you were speaking at large to Mr. Key, what would you say to him right now? And then I'm going to ask you the same thing. If the 75th precinct were looking at this right now, what would you say to them? Um, if I was a... Uh, if you were saying to Mr. Key, what would you say to Mr. Key as a result of this right now? If, would you, what would you have to say to him at, at the end of the day, now that we've done this, what would you say to Mr. Key directly on behalf of you, young people? Um, basically, I, I feel like this, this is an a excellent effort, and it shows how much you care about what's happening in the community. You know, a lot of people don't put things together, and they speak it, speak about it, they talk about it, but it's never happened. You know, even during the meeting that we had, he's, he said one thing that um, allowed me to say, you know what, I really respect this guy. You know, he's talking about a lot of things. He's like, you know what, we're not even going to talk about it anymore. A lot of people talk, but not so many people do. So we're not going to talk about it, we're just going to do it. And immediately he took action with certain things that we were talking about, you know, and as far as listening to different ideas, you know, it's really comfortable. Um, talking about, you know, about the youth board, I brung it up so many times at so many meetings and nobody really listened to it. And the first thing that everybody did, take our pen and paper, let's write it down, how can we start, let's move on. You know, that's two days ago that we talked about it and already it's in motion. You know, so that's the most important thing. You need somebody that's going to be there, that's going to listen, and no matter what the idea is. If it's a good idea, a bad idea, if it's something that's going to towards um, a positive motion, let's try it. What would you say to the inspector of the 75th Precinct and the officers of the 75th Precinct? Um, they out here, you know. <laughs> They're here. They're ready they're to speak here. to yeah. the kids. Yeah. yeah. You know, so that means they care also. Uh, even talking to them before we stepped out. You know, um, that's the, the main concern. It doesn't sound it doesn't sound like, you know, they just hear, okay, this is a job, I'm just gonna do it. Like I'm generally here to get something done. You know, even the some of the questions that I asked them, they had the answers to it. They already have things in play to actually work with the youth. Everything that we spoke about they already have into play. So you can tell that's what they think about is getting to the youth instead of you know pushing them away. Yeah. Here's the inspector. Chief. Excuse me, sir. Chief, the inspector, sir. We were yes. just asking yeah. um, one of the youth leaders. Hey, how's it going? Um, Good. Good. Thanks. Who are you, sir? Okay. I, I, and you're an inspector, right? Yep. Okay. What do you think about the increase to peace no, that's effort my fault. today? I think this is great. I, I think that uh, you know anything we do to improve the relationship between the community and the police department is always a positive. And you know, for everybody to come out on a zero degree <laughs> day just means a lot. It just it, it proves how much the community really wants to work with the police department, and the police department wants to work with the community. Well, Mr. Smith just said something. I think you need to hear. Can you just repeat some of what you just said a few minutes ago when I asked you what would you say to the inspector and some of the officers of the 75th? Um, just by talking to you know most of the you know police officers 
that's here, it, it tells me that they care about the youth. You know, um, it's not just a front. You know, a lot of people speak about it because that's what they have to. It's not just a front. And everyone's here. Just like you said, it's cold outside, and everybody's willing to speak about it. Everybody's willing to talk about it. So that's the first step into a positive direction. Well, I, I appreciate that. And, uh, that, that's what it's all about. That, that's really what it's all about. I mean, you know, like I always tell the officers, you know, treat people as you would want your family to be treated. You know, we're here to serve the public, and, and the public being the the, uh, the residents of East New York. Going on for many years. It's, it goes on all across the country, and it is, you know, a, a part of policing that when it's done right, it's extremely important. Um, obviously, you know, over the years, it got to be uh, something that was done too much. I mean, uh, I think the police department has acknowledged that. Um, we've made reforms with the stop, question, and frisk policy. But stop, question, and frisk, no, make, do not, you know, make no mistake about it, it is, it is something that is legal. And it is something that's important to the police, but it's also important to the community because it does protect the community and it does help fighting violent crime. And it is something that we use right it's, it's an effective So what should they do with their stuff? They should ask why they're being stopped. And the officer should explain to them why they're stopped. Because there are a lot of times where I have stopped questioning for somebody in, in the past, throughout my years of, of policing, 21 years now, where after I explain why I did something, it brings it totally down. It brings it totally down. You know, you could be walking down a block where you might not know that we just had a shooting 30 minutes in the past, or that there's a, a, a robbery pattern there or in that, on that block. You know, there's a lot of things, obviously, that the public doesn't know that the police department doesn't does know. So you should ask why you're why you're getting stopped, listen to the officer, and then you know you can make your decision in your mind if you think you were appropriately stopped or not. Very small handful of precincts that have two impacts on us. We are one of those precincts that have two impacts on us. We have one on the east side of the precinct, one on the west side of the precinct. And those are the zones where the officers are, are, are walking. Uh, as far as we have a third impact zone, which is called an in impact response zone, where the, the overhead command, which is my patrol bar, sends me 40 additional officers every single day, or I should say, working about 25 officers every day that are in another impact zone. So when I say two, I really should be saying three. So we have three impact zones, um, uh, you know, within, within, the, uh, within the precinct. We've been working on other avenues of trying to reach out to you know, uh, people that are at risk. Operation Ceasefire has started. And that from, that's a spin-off of, of a Chicago initiative where we go and visit um, people that are in crews that might be on the fence. And we're letting them know. And I'm, not, I'm going myself. And I'm going with um, a clergyman. And I'm going with a, another agency law enforcement, whether it be the FBI, whether it be somebody from probation and parole, we're all coming together and we're talking to that person. And this, this is what's going on in your crew. You might not be the one that's committing this, but we know you're part of this crew. And if it doesn't stop, then you are going to be dealt with with a lot of different avenues of law enforcement. We want it to stop, so we're trying to, to do that. Um, and good evening. We're at the Increase the Peace. March organized by East New York Urban Youth Corps in the 75th Precinct. What's your name, sir? My name is Reverend Townsley. Yes. Um, what do you think about the march today and the efforts to um, for, towards community partnership with the 75th Precinct? I think it's very important that we had this march today. I think it's very important that the community, along with our youth, come together uh, to establish uh, a movement 
to increase the peace and to stop the violence. We're looking at violence on many different levels out here. Uh, a lot of the young people are at each other, uh, but we're also looking at our police department and the conflict between the police department, per se, and the community. And the reason why I say it like that is because I find that in our police department we have thousands of police officers that have never shot their gun in the street. Uh, that have never done ill to the uh, people of this community. Uh, but there's a handful of them that's wreaking havoc from time to time. Nobody wants to say that, but it's true. And we need to address that. Uh, and we're seeing that the culture, police culture in the black community, okay, is uh, increasing in a negative way and we want to slow that down. We want to engage with the positive officers that are in our community. Many of the officers that are in our community go up and above the call of duty and do things for the senior citizens and do things for the youth. And when they're off duty, they come in and volunteer their time and their resources and their efforts to make positive things happen. We need to look at that. We need to focus on that. We need to let that be infectious. Are there any in legacy community. officers that actually were examples in the past historically or yes, did you know now if by name that we could name? I don't know any by name right off the top of my head right, right now. I'm not that good with names. <laughs> but yes, we can do that. Yeah. Because I know that there are several officers uh, in the East New York area, in the bed area, and the Brownsville area that have great reputations yeah. of doing things with youth and for youth and for the seniors and have gone up and above the call of duty. However, we cannot close our eyes to the ill that is being done and the wrong things that are being done. We need to look at that also and put a stop at it and not let folk feel that it's okay to come into our community and do the wrong thing. So just like we're telling our youth to do the right thing, we want to tell our officers to do the right thing. And I think if we come together collectively and work together, we can accomplish that goal. And that's my main concern. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Afternoon. We're at the Increase the Peace March organized by East New York Urban Youth Corps and the 75th Precinct. Uh, what's your name? Constant. Yeah. East New York, resident. Uh, why are you here? It's 10 below. And we're about to march, but why are you here? I just want to make a statement, you know. I'm, I'm not really for the whole march thing, but I just here to make a statement. You know, there's a lot more to just increase the peace. I mean, like, in order to, like, you know, I have peace, you got in the war in the streets first. So, it's going to take a lot more. What does that mean? That means in the war in the streets. War in the streets, like the war on ourselves, the war on our own people. You gotta stop that first. That that has to be focused on, like being non-competitive. That's another ten-minute walk. In, in a non-competitive so society, we are. It makes it more difficult to actually point out racism, point out other issues if you're not building for your community. If you're not building for your own people, then what's there really to talk about? So, Do you think there are any issues in terms of Im for improving a community police relations? It can, but it has to be replacement of people. Replacement of people who do not belong in, the, in this type of institutions, who do not belong in, um, belong in policing, but it has to be a change. Like, if, in order for people to make change, they gotta change themselves first. Where would you start? I would start with myself. Most of the time, I would start with, um, you know, the enemy, with, enemy within. The, the, it's really complicated. That that would be the most main part to start with myself. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening. We're at the um, Increase the Peace March organized by East New York Urban Youth Corps and the 75th Precinct in East New York, Brooklyn. What's your name, sir? My name is C. Aaron Hinton. Uh, See an Aaron Hinton. Um, you represent an organization here or yourself? Yes, I represent an organization called DUCES. That's D U E C E S. DUCES stands for Do Use Enlightenment and Cultural Empowerment Service. We're based out of um, Brownsville, Brooklyn, New York. What do you do? Well, um, our mission, our motto, and goal are all the same to save our youth, save our streets, squash the beef, and increase the peace. Wow. Um, what do you think? Um, how do you think this march today might help that effort? 
Uh, I believe this march today might definitely help the effort because um, it seems that, you know, I see a lot of youth out here, and then I see a lot of police out here. So the presence of youth and police together definitely seems to be a pretty good thing in um, heading towards our goal of actually squashing all the beef and increasing the peace in our communities. Have you seen this ever happen before? Um, I mean, not to this magnitude where we actually came out and marched from one area to another and then here in the school. So I'm definitely excited. The energy is great. I'm definitely be How do we contact you? Uh, you can contact me at 347-589-7583. Again, that's 347-589-7583. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good afternoon. Okay. So... <laughs> So, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak amongst you. I know you've been here for a little while and you're probably going to be moving around a bit, but if I could get, just get your attention, maybe five, ten minutes, I would greatly appreciate that. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Thank you. So, again, my name is Nikki Lucas. I've been living in this community for over 30 years. I actually live in Starrick City. I'm a single mom, but I'm not a single parent. And I actually used to own a music store in the community uh, several years ago. I used to sell mixtapes. And um, I've invested a lot in a number of different community organizations. My motivation for doing many of the things that I do is one, because I have a nine-year-old daughter and because I'm blessed to have both my parents who have made it to senior ages. So the things that I do are targeted towards youth and seniors. And I to myself, while I've made it through several educational levels, it wasn't as easy as it was for some others. I actually founded an organization called the People's First, the People First, Democratic Club in November of 2013. Now, while it's a Democratic Club, it actually has a nonpartisan agenda, which means that if you're not interested in being a Democrat, if you're a Republican, independent, or could care less about a party, you can come and benefit from the information that we give. The reason why I started this particular organization is because growing up, my parents insisted that we be part of some type of political agenda. And the reason being is because they understood that them voting and supporting people and elected officials and leaders within the community was supposed to actually benefit the people in the community. So my parents put pressure on them to make sure that we got proper jobs, that we got proper education, and that there were no obstacles that actually were in front of us as a result of their support. But then as the years went by, I saw a lot of the older leaders kind of getting a little bit tired because they've been doing so much, but there, were no one, there was no one that they mentored to take over the whole process of it all. So what ended up happening is that people stopped voting in our communities People barely vote. People don't really know who their elected officials are. If they see them, they don't really know their roles. When you get in trouble or you need some assistance with something, you really don't know where to go. Oftentimes, you get the runaround. And how many of us can say that we've, or our parents, have experienced that? Okay. So, what ended up happening, I was part of a group that went from being extremely active to just organizing when it was time to actually get together to elect an elected official. Half the time it was people we probably never seen throughout the year. So what I did, I wanted to go into a totally different direction. I wanted to galvanize people so that we went back to the original mission of what it was supposed to be. We wanted to be able to have a strong voice for the community so that we can group together for community advocacy, so that we can disseminate the information that you need when you have questions um, regarding school or housing or something's wrong on your block or something happened in the street. You know it, where it is to go. 
But part of the problem too is that we're also not part of the, the laws that they create. We're never part of that process. They create these things and it never includes us. So when situations happen on the street or cops are stopping us, it was fantastic to hear about the policing. It's fantastic to hear about the procedures, but there are laws that govern those procedures. And while they don't have to enact their procedures, guess what happens when a situation occurs like uh, uh, Eric Gardner, for, for instance, right? While a chokehold procedure is not necessarily enacted, it's legal for him to have done that because in his eyes, he can justify and articulate why he had to use it. He's going to argue that he had to use it because he was faced with some type of imminent danger. And he did what's in the best interest to protect himself and others around him. So when you're looking at things like the grand jury and none of us are included on that, we can never input what happens to us. It happens to us because we weren't part of the process. And if you watch some of your parents, and I have been guilty of it in the past, when jury jury comes up, I had something better to do. My father used to say to me, and this is what actually impacted my change, you have to serve on a jury because you could be saving someone like yourself. Because other than that, you're relying on someone else to make a decision for you. So what I do is I invite a lot of the elected officials out. They come out, they define who they are, they define the resources that their um, uh, uh, legislative body handles for us, and we've established relationships which we also have to learn to do and as that, a community. And that is definitely a great tool when it comes down to us to communicate each other. Though we're using some, there's some platforms and some sites that you go on that, you know, I mean, it, you know, it gets off the hook at times, but it's, it's what it is. But it's, but I love y'all. I, I, I tell you, Mr. Farrakhan, look, Mr. Farrakhan will be 82 years old, but anywhere we take him, we were just at Morgan State University, he packed it out. Cues, cappers, the young people come out because they like Farrakhan because he got that spirit, that gangster. You, you know, you know the people don't love him because he always loved y'all, and I mean y'all, and I don't distinguish between black and and, and, and what we call Hispanic because you're all the people of color, black people. You originated from that continent called Africa, and then you speak Spanish or you speak uh, uh, French, but it's still all the same people. So when we have a man stand up and speak to you like that, you understand that's a love. Now what I want to say to you is here today is that when you're speaking to the police, you're speaking to an agency that is empowered by the government to do their job. They're not social workers. They're not social workers. They have laws that they have to abide by, enforce, and do their job. The job of raising our, the raising our children is that of our families and our communities. We have to learn in proper dialogue and love ourselves. I love this sign that brother has over there. I stopped him. That brother, can you hold that sign up for me, please? Stand up in front, bring me that sign. I want you to read this sign, because this is a critical to what we're actually doing as people. What is that sign? Can somebody read that sign for me? Read it out loud for me. Self-hatred. That, that, that's it, right? Because what we have to do, we can't ask anybody to respect us more than we respect ourselves. I'll say that again. We can't ask anybody to respect us more than we respect ourselves. And you are my future. You are my leaders I'm looking at right here. You have, you have a golden opportunity now to take charge of your post. And we definitely want to encourage that by having this dialogue. But when you finish this dialogue, you talk and then you put it into action. You know what I be say. You know, people get out in the street, you say, I hear what you're saying, but what you're doing. You know what I mean? You gotta step to it. You gotta step to it. And I'm looking at you young ladies and I don't see B's and H's. 
I don't see bees and angels. I see God, I see mother, I see Marys that give birth to Jesus. See, you have to think of yourself. No, you don't laugh about that, sir, because no other way, um, any, no being gets on the planet without the services of a woman. Everybody comes through a woman. Everybody gets on this planet comes through a woman. So no woman that I'm looking at is a B&H because my mother was a woman. And nobody's going to tell me my mother was that. So you don't see yourself, you don't let anybody call you that. I'm looking at the black man who's God, second self, and a woman who's God. But you're not a dog. That's God back with skeleton. So how do you go from being a God to a dog? So we have to understand how we see ourselves, how we express ourselves, and how we live. And if we see ourselves differently, we'll live differently. And people won't have to police us like dogs and be I, I want everybody on this side to stand up. Because these, we were just like you. I was in a marching band way back in 75 in high school. So it's been a long time. And I used to play those snares and the triplets. I also played trumpet. So thank you. These are the people that we're out here in my next minute, and that's all it's gonna take, is we wanna help you. We have gone through the system in many various ways. Time of most, we still got people still in jail from 1970 that's just getting out. Some of them don't know what a cell phone is. We don't wanna ever see that from this place. I wanna give a hand for old Say. CC, she went through his program. Yes, that's my daughter. You'll find her now working at Wendy's across the street. <laughs> yeah, we want that, that, that burger with the, with the blue cheese, that's where it's at. But we're here to help you. And we have a team, he, uh, Dr. Winchester here. Give him a hand. Yes. Yes. All right. Hey. He's bringing people in, just like Nikki Lucas. She had some people at one of her meetings that helped me. I didn't tell her that, but now she knows. We all need help. You're looking at people from the older group, from like uh, Loco, yeah. that's been there a long time and has come back to be a throwback to help you get through. They help people to get in college, and we want to be a part of that teamwork. You're not like everyone else. You're not out gangbanging. You're not out robbing. You carry sticks instead of guns. You carry drums and instruments instead of weapons. And we applaud you because some of us did get in that life and we just barely got away from it. If I'd have stayed in marching band, I wouldn't have went to jail. If I'd have stayed in the Navy, because I, I was so good at this that I was in the marching band in the Navy. But sometimes things catch you. We don't want you to get to go down those roads. So any number that you hear today in this place, and you'll be back in another month, and we'll bring more people, yes. and we're going to bring continue to keep bringing resources that none of us in this room now should see a jail cell unless you're watching TV. We come to help. It's a hard, chaotic world we live in. But some people make it through without getting caught up in any trouble. And we give you a hand. That's right. Yeah. yeah. We thank pioneers like Dr. Winchester, who got us all together in a think tank. We're working on youth programs that will assist you, Ose, and other groups like Aaron, if he's still in the room. And you too. We're trying to find ways to bring revenue, money, to bring space, to bring time. Because one of the things that we're missing, in my last 30 seconds, in this room, is we're missing youth programs. And you're in one that's going to be the best. We, we want to make you the model. And if I can say this, you have a chance to be the best now, because Soul Tigers got put out. Not putting any of them down if you're in the road. But the bottom line, the parents that support you, 
Because as long as you rocking those sticks and playing those beats, you ain't got time to be out there in the streets. We take a moment for the member that you lost last summer. Because she was dear to all of us. But it let us know, it let us know that we can be caught out there too. Stay where you're at. Dr. Winchester is going to continue to bring us in and we're going to continue to look for things. Next time you come, I heard, you know, down the grapevine, he, he can't see, so I'm hoping he don't get this either. But y'all going to put some things together, like a Facebook page. And we want you to reach out. We want to pack this room. So that means each one of you have to tell somebody. That's right. Turn to your neighbor and say, tell somebody. About two or three of you in here got at least two thousand friends on Facebook. Right, right. Exactly. I'm pretty sure if I look through my Facebook and look through Cece's page, I'm gonna see some of y'all. So if I tell somebody, some of y'all gonna get that hit too. So tell somebody. Because we want to pack this place. We want to know what your concerns are. It was good, even though we may have went over the time. But I believe in divine intervention. Where just what yes, was man. needed for you to see the inspector of the 75th precinct here to answer your questions. East New York has the biggest precinct. When everybody else got a little bit of area, we got a lot of area. If you live in the projects, the PSA, and they, they're not like any, the PS2 is not like anyone else. Every other precinct, PS, precinct has like 16 to 20 housing complex. Ours have 40. So what I'm saying is everything in East New York is big. We do it big. So next time we come into this room next month, two things I want to hear. One is the sound of people that's not in this band or people that want to join the band. Get him to work. He got a computer, he, he got stuff on the computer, get him to work. The second thing, we want to hear the Black National Anthem play. Oh yeah, so he has a job. Some of you say you know it. Tell your neighbor, teach me. <laughs> All right, and that, that's the end of my moment. But I want you to know, that we love you. We love you very much. My daughter came out of this program and she's doing okay. So I endorse Jose with everything I got. And we fought over the years on some issues. <laughs> we have fought. But the bottom line is he's been true to his word and he has not deviated. So we need you to help us. Because without you, he would not be a leader. He would not be a director. And he would not be a mentor. Same thing with me. Without Dr. Winchester here, I wouldn't be here. Nikki Lucas wouldn't be here. Brother Paul wouldn't be here. The, the inspector wouldn't be here. But we're here because we hear what you're saying. We hear you. Now we need you to put it into the question and ask us. Put us to the test that we can find the answer that you're looking for. Charge us with that. If you get the question, we have to find the answer. Now I'm gonna say this one more time. Turn to your neighbor. Get a question and bring it next month. Come on, turn your other neighbor. And uh, first of all, I, I I love the way that you express yourself, and you guys, you you really ask uh, uh, really really uh, insightful questions. And uh, my question to you guys, uh, starting with you, is what do you want to be? when you grow up? Well, since I'm already grown, <laughs> I'm not really one of the students. Okay, that's cool. Um, I just want to keep doing what I'm doing as far as my career as a dance instructor. Nice. Um, I wanted to also become a parent also. So, nice. um, just working with children. Okay. It doesn't have to be little kids. I prefer the older ones anyway because nice. they understand. I understand them more. So um, I just want to continue working with the girls, and if I can, other students. They don't necessarily have to be band kids. Okay, good. Thanks. What do you want to be? A dancer. Okay. And uh, where's the guys? What do you want to be? Yeah. I was trying to go 
Uh huh. Nice. Okay, so do we have you? Nice. You? You get. She wants to be a police officer or a nurse. A, a nurse. Wow. I want to be a psychologist. Nice. What do you want to be? I want to be a registered nurse, OBGYN. We are next to nurse. That's good. So, um, we're, we're East New York Urban Youth Corps, and Mr. Key is a director, and what we've done under the direction of Mr. Winchester Key is we put together a community mega hub. So we put together a whole bunch of uh, not-for-profit organizations to make all of these resources available to you. Whatever it is that you say that you want to be, it's up to us to put those resources in place to guide you in the right direction. Um, if we have anybody, especially black males that want to be educators, Clemson has a, pro Cle Clemson has a program called Call Me Mister. And they'll pay for four years of college if you choose to be an educator. There's no female. Okay. I'm a <laughs> right? And, and, and so, so do we have any future audio engineers in here? Anybody that wants to make records and good stuff like that? Okay, there's a link on our site. Um, okay, we have a link on our site. Uh, our site is uh, East New York Urban Youth Corps Facebook, okay? And so you go to our Facebook site and you'll see a list of resources. Everything from the Institute of Audio Research to if you want to be a fitness instructor, nationally certified, we have that link on the site. If you want to be a naval officer, we have that on the site. Air Force ROTC, we have that on the site. Uh, uh, what else do we have? If you want to be a modular builder, we have that on the site. So we have a plethora of resources on the site. And I, I mean, I've been up half the night putting stuff on the site just for you guys to be able to go to. Um, if I'm missing anything, please forgive me. But I mean, we have tons of stuff on the site for you guys to see. And moving forward, oh, the Parks Department has this program. If anybody wants to be a graphic artist, a graphic designer, or you want to get into digital uh, publishing, that's on the site. <laughs> so, you know, anything that you guys need, uh, you just let me know. You can go on the site. I have a program that said, well, I have a question that says, please share with us all of the things that you would like to see as programs and resources that you would like to see put into this community in order to further you along to where it is that you want to be. Okay? And so our commitment is to you because our investment is you. You are our future. And we, we, we've come to grips with that, right? So yesterday I was 22. Today I'm 45. And I've got gray hair is coming out my beard now, right? So, today you guys might be 15, 16, but guess what? <laughs> so, so that's, that's just how the circle of life goes. We grow, we get older, and it's up to us to give back in order to further along the process. So this is the give back for a lot of us. And so, we're committed to your growth. Because one day, you may be our next congressman. You may be our next council person. You may be our next doctor, our lawyer, our, our, our choreographer. Whatever it is that you choose to be, we are here to support you. So remember, East New York Urban Youth Corps at Facebook, right? And you go there and you look at our site and all of those resources are there. And your band director has the uh, contact information for East New York Urban Youth Corps. And so you can ask him for it, and he can get you guys in contact with us so that we can put other things into place. We're also developing programs for urban gardening and stuff like that. I mean, if you want to learn about aquaponics and all of that good stuff. Um, and we're also looking to getting some programs to teach us about our history, because there were uh, uh, pyramids 
here in North America that pre-existed the pyramids in Egypt. Did you guys know that? They're called the mounds of North America. All right? And at one time, this place was called Amexum. So there's a lot of history here. And uh, not all of us came here by way of slave ship. So we can get deep, and we can learn, and we can grow together. And so how does that sound to you guys? Uh, all right, cool. So it's a date. Let's uh, go on the site. Let's look and see what we want to do. And if there's anything that you guys see that's missing, please just post a comment and say, hey, we'd like to see this, and I'll make it happen. What's the address? Uh, East New York Urban Youth Corp. Uh, at the, at the, uh, no, the, the address at the location and the address online. Well, 539 Alabama. And, and, uh, between and, the, and the website address. Oh, our website is uh, enyuic.net, East New York Urban Youth Corp.net. And of course, we're on Facebook. And we have to plug in our Twitter and all of that stuff. I'm a little slow with that. And you know, you guys are the tech, techies, right? So I'm just getting up to speed on that. But we're going to plug all that stuff in so that we can be fully wired, OK? And so we thank you for your attention and your listening. You've been generous with folks. Thanks. Do I have a youth who'd like to respond to what you've heard? Any youth that'd like to respond? Thank you. Anyone? Care none? Yes. One? Yes. Please come up. Yes. Um, I wanted to know if you had any um, programs specifically for women, um, especially as far as empowerment. I know uh, it's hard for females to get jobs when they see other things. That's a way out to get easier. Um, and I wanted to just know if those kind of programs are available for females, especially teaching them about value for themselves and you know stuff like that that uh, would help out with that okay would well, I direct that to Mr. Haywood or uh, Nikki yes they, they are programs like that um, if you guys want to get actually call me <laughs> so that we can organize getting you some programs that are actually targeting women I'll be able to do that for you I mean like both too because like a lot of things that I grew up with, even I'm not that old, I'm only 23, but even things like I grew up with Jenny Meetings, they don't have that in school. Things like that, uh, I think that they should bring back. No, they do have programs that exist, um, several different programs based on age and the direction that you want to go, actually mentorship programs mm -hmm. um, that Hello. followed you from now through college and career. They do have them. So just, um, if yes. Hello? Young ladies, young men, you need to get to that clinic. I'm on the board. We want you in there to help you with your health care issues because we have to get ourselves healthy. And especially my sisters. Please come there. I'll give you my card. That clinic on the corner of Pennsylvania Pickens. Of That's the so you have to have college credits to become a cadet. And cadets is basically your stepping stone into NYPD. So instead of having to take the test to get into NYPD, you're going to take a promotional exam and be get into yeah. NYPD. The cadet program is such an awesome program. Yeah. And I will, and I think everybody's going to The mayor, I'm sorry, just the the next fiscal has allocated money for the first time in a lot of years to expand the nurse. And I mean, when you talk about something that, that's, that's good, I mean, that, that's something that, you know, the, you know, the, the police department is, is, is exciting right now. You know, we understand the issue. And that's why I'm here. Um, I mean, we don't have to understand the We understand we're looking to reach out to the community and try to bridge that gap. And then, uh, you know, there's one of those that, you know, we've been more than half 
Dialogue with the youth of the community and the community at large, okay? I'm going to take Carol. All right. Every time bring her and an MJ too. Don't leave MJ right. behind. MJ goes wherever I go. Where you go. So, listen, one more time, uh, Inspector, we thank you. Thank you, Richard.